The official opening of the canal was scheduled for August 15, 1914. Kukaracha slide was anxiously watched, and dredges continued to work feverishly to keep the canal open. The Panama Railroad steamship Ancon was to have the honor of making the first trip from Atlantic to Pacific. But another transit was planned, one of far more interest to those of us who had lived here and worked on the construction of this famous waterway. On August 3rd, Ancon's sister ship, Cristobal, would sail through the canal from Cristobal to Balboa. Colonel Gothels himself had issued the invitations, limiting them to those who had served at least eight years of the construction project. And wives were included. When Charlie brought our invitation home, I was all excited. It was the chief topic of conversation for days, in the offices, at parties, at the commissary. The women whose husbands were not among the privileged 200 were frankly envious of those who were. The special train for Cristobal was leaving the station at Balboa at 5 o'clock in the morning. The evening before such an important day, I wanted to turn in early, but despite our good intentions, we stayed up late with friends to celebrate the great day. It was the wee small hours when we finally turned in. On Sunday, August 9, 1914, came the staggering news that Germany and Russia were at war. It seems unbelievable. I remember being out to dinner with a man from the war office in London, and he said, it is bound to come. I give it three years. That was six, seven years ago. One got so used to hearing it that one expected it without expecting it at all. Everybody is stupefied and everything has stopped. Folded away in this little pocket of the universe, one cannot grasp it. The financial side of it comes to us quickly enough, for everything is paralyzed already. Fresh orders have arrived to say that everything possible has to be closed down and already preparations are being made for half the Jamaicans to return to their own island. William believes that President Wilson may not be able to keep America out of the fight now that the war has been declared. The Orinoco is coming up the lagoon now, and we are impatiently waiting for the news she brings. She may possibly be the last big vote of call. If the worst comes to the worst, we shall all have to eat bananas. <laughs> Since the news, a sudden silence has fallen like a thunderclap. Everything is quiet, except the rain. The steam shovel stands motionless by the cut, like some great black insect pinned against a red wall. And the dump engines have been gathered into the yard. This morning, the Jamaican man who brought the ice gave his opinion of the war. I knew it would come soon, and I'm glad of it. It was inevitable. The only thing that could have happened, and I'm glad to take up the fight. England is a great country, and she will prevail. I hope so, but surely there will be plenty of time for England to change course and appease the Germans. No, 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 no. The empire must be defended at any cost. The Lord is with us. Who can be against us? But the Germans are also counting on that. <laughs> then. They must expect to be disappointed. God save the king. <laughs> the Lord his God was an Englishman first and last. <laughs> and blood is thicker than water. <laughs> we reached Gatun as the Cristobal was entering the first lock. We ran to the side and watched as the boat was raised slowly until the water was level with that in the next lock. Amid laughter and good-natured banter, we scrambled aboard. With minor delays, we passed through the remaining locks. Then the towing lines were cast off, and we proceeded under our own power into Gatun Lake. We reached the place where the dredges were working. Colonel Gothels, in a small launch, was watching our progress. At Pedro Miguel, we saw him again, and at Miraflores, when the last lock gate was opened, and we steamed triumphant into the sea-level channel. We all shouted and waved to him. He was standing on the lock wall, with a smile of satisfaction on his face. As we approached Balboa, we stood silent on the prow of the ship. Ahead lay the calm Pacific, with the Southern Cross low in the sky. Behind was the completed canal. A dream of centuries had come true. 
Although no invitation was ever extended, the workers watched the progress of the ship from the banks of the canal. They could take satisfaction knowing they had contributed to this immense accomplishment, and their shouts rose up as the ships passed by.